Zerlina Maxwell is here, and she's a political analyst and writer who is also unhappy with that segment. <laughs> And Bishop Harry Jackson of Hope Christian Church is also here. He's a radio talk show host, but we're going to start with Zerlina. Zerlina, thank you for being here. Where did I thank go Thank you wrong? for having me. Well, I just think that, you know, the, 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 you know, you demanded that Santa be white when Santa is a magical man that flies around the world in a, in a flying sled. He is not a real thing. And so I think kids should be able to use their imagination when we're talking about fictional characters and make him whatever they want him to be. If he's white, black, it doesn't matter. And so I think that the insistence that he must be white simply because advertisers have portrayed him this way in America, I think that that was the thing that turned people off. I, I don't think that, you know, you're a racist. I don't know what's in your heart. I, I don't call people racist, but I think that, you know, the insistence that he must be white, I think that's something that we should talk about and, and really I, discuss and I think I about why that, that is. How did I demand and insist that he must be white? Well, you said he, he just is white. That is the case. And so, and it's not, okay, but, but you know, let, it's but not let, me, let me stop you there because I was trying to explain this in the talking points. <laughs> And we've already given the spoiler alert at the top of the show. We know there's no Santa. The, the, is, right. is a mythical character, right? So the only right. Santa I could possibly have been referring to is the commercially driven image of Santa. And I was simply arguing that that image is of a white Santa. And that is the very same thing that Aisha Harris acknowledged in her piece and was arguing we need to change. She and I were on the same page about the fact that the image that is portrayed in the country of Santa mm -hmm. is white. That, we, we were the same on that, but when she said it and described him as melanin deficient, no one cried racism. When I said <laughs> what she said, I was accused of racism. Well, I just think that, you know, sometimes we have to take a step back and wonder why most of these historical figures um, are portrayed as white. I think that it's very, very important for people of color. You know, I, growing up, I had a black Santa in my house. I have a black Jesus. I'm the, I'm the daughter of two pastors. And so I had a black Jesus in my house growing up. I think it's really important that, you know, symbols of tradition and culture in our society reflect all of us and all of our identities. And that's why it was problematic because, you know, def white, white is not a default color. It's not the default identity. We, you know, we're a diverse agree uh, body that. of people. I think everybody agrees on that. I mean, I, the only thing I was trying to say when I, first of all, I was trying to make a joke to the kids at home. People were saying, oh, what kids are watching Fox <laughs> News at 9 o'clock at night? But we are at 6 p.m. on the West Coast, and people, I know from my viewers that they watch with their families and so on. So I didn't want to get in trouble like GMA did a couple years ago when they said some bad things about Elf on the Shelf. So I was sort of trying to do a tongue-in-a-cheek warning to the kids that, like, why would they be talking about what race Santa is? That you know, people know that Santa's real. What, you know, he must have a race right now as he's walking around at the North Pole, and that's where you know people sort of—I don't know what happened, but I think they, they they misinterpreted me some genuinely, and then I think some people who who like to hate on Fox News and and on me started to ascribe some really unfortunate motives. Well, there's certainly people that are, you know, put unfortunate motives on you and me. You know, I, I appear in Fox News rather frequently as a Democrat. And so, you know, the hate mail that I receive is pretty ugly as well. I just think that, you know, we, we need to expand our imaginations when we're talking about fictional characters. There was a controversy with The Hunger Games about one of the characters being portrayed as a black actress, even though she's actually in the book described as a black person. And people weren't able to feel the same level of sympathy for the character because she was black. The, the, the the root of that is actually very problematic, and we, and we should really yeah. tap into why that is. Let me ask you this, because uh, you know we didn't really get to debate, you know, Miss Harris's you know mm -hmm. position, which was we need to think about changing the image of Santa. Um, mm -hmm. But that too has has brought a lot of you know feelings out by a lot of our viewers saying, look, mm -hmm. you know, historically all those pieces I referenced, all those pieces Miss Harris referenced, showed a black Santa, and some people mm -hmm. are taking issue with her suggestion that the mere color of his skin in these portrayals as white is somehow alienating to black children or as she put it causes shame in them i mean your it is alienating to black children why it's why, is, why is white skin alienating and and why is that not well, racist well I'll just give you an anecdote. I grew up in an all-white town. I was the only black student until high school, and so my mom prioritized having symbol, symbols, traditional symbols, cultural symbols in the house that looked like me, so I could grow up as a young girl and be proud of who I am. That is really important as you're developing your identity growing up. And so it's not about whiteness being problematic for me and seeing whiteness is, is 
makes me feel shame. It's really about being proud of who you are and seeing things and understanding your history and your heritage. And I think that, have, you know, I had black Barbie dolls growing up um, just because okay. my mom wanted me to have high self-esteem. Okay. Well, listen, Zerlina, thanks for coming on. We appreciate your point of view. Thank you. Now we're going to bring in Bishop Harry Jackson of Hope Christian Church. He is also a radio talk show host. Bishop, your thoughts on this? Yes. Well, I think this is overblown. What you're dealing with is that Fox has a certain image. You're being attacked, I think, unfairly. And as somebody who grew up, whose father saw people lynched, all kind of things of that nature, I'd say some folks, especially younger folks like your last guest, should build a bridge and get over it. We are dealing with the fact that St. Nick was actually a real figure, and it doesn't really matter what the skin color is. The idea that Aisha Harris had was that we're going to denigrate the religious value of Christmas, we're going to do away with the man's ethnicity, and we're going to make him into a penguin. It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> That's not the ridiculous. headline. Somehow that didn't get any attention. Let's change Santa into a penguin. Instead, what I yeah. said got attention. Yeah, but they were looking for you. And I think what we're dealing with right now is people are explosive and they'd rather talk about what you are saying in a, a kind of ideological kind of format instead of dealing with substance. We are not going to get past the race problem in America until we begin to deal with real issues instead of all this stereotypical shadow boxing. And I think we can based on our faith, based on the Mandela uh, model, based on MLK. I think we can overcome the race problem in our nation, but we're not trying hard enough, Megan. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. What do you make of, uh, you know, we played some of the sound bites there, and people, I think, mischaracterizing the segment by describing me as outraged over this and angry. If you, you know, if you watch it, and I don't know if we have the sound bite, but just, I mean, does this say outrage to you? P let's play it. Okay. But Jedediah, when yeah. I read the piece, the author seems to have, you know, she's African American, and she yeah. seems to have real pain at having grown up with this image of a white Santa, and she speaks about it kind of honestly, saying, I, I didn't really understand why yeah. that had to be. Your thoughts? Well, I don't think that that had anger. I think, though, if I'm hurt, if I'm bitter, if I have unresolved issues, any mention of these things causes me to rise up. And I think that's really part of the problem in America right now. We've got a 400-year-old problem starting with slavery that's never fully been settled. And many times we talk around these issues. Mm -hmm. And now the, the problems we're having at the Capitol building, Democrat versus Republican, all have racial implications as well. And it should not be, Megan. Yeah. I think we can do better. We are better than that. You would certainly hope, uh, you know, particularly this time of year, we, we, we can do better and try to come together and try, as I said in my opening, not to always assume the worst about each other. Don't we always just assume the worst? And then, and then we go on Twitter and blindly say the meanest things we can possibly say. I'll give you the last words. Well, I, I really appreciate your having this segment. I think the way you treated your last guest who you could have vehemently disagreed with shows you do have tolerance. Keep up the good work. I think you'll make a difference. We're going to change the way we deal with this issue over time. Thank you, Bishop. Merry Christmas to you. Okay. Merry Christmas to you.